Punjabi Hai Gopi Janavala Bhagavara Kopi Janavala Bhagavara Jashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Jashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachai Yamuna Tira Banachai Jaya Rukmini Dorakadish Rukmini Dorakadish Rukmini Dorakadish Rukmini Dorakadish Jaya Jagana, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Baladeva, Jaya Subhadra, Jaya Goranitai, Goranitai, Goranitai. Jaya Goranitai Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Srila Prabhupada Go Premanandi Hayaimo Jayom Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravrajak Acharya Asatara Satashi Shimai this kind BBT founder Charles Divine Grace is Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nitya Lila Prabhupada Om Vishnu Pad is Divine Grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishabhinda Ki Jai. Nam Acharya Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Sakho Hoshka Shri Chaitanya Prabhu Dhananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gorbhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopana Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Gira Govardhan Ki Jai. Shri Bhajabhumi Nama Nama Ki Jai Shri Nabari Mahipur Nama Ki Jai Shri Nala Chal Jagannath Puri Nama Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shmati Tulsa Maharani Ki Jai The most beautiful worship, Shri Shukmini Dorkadish Ki Jai Shri Shukmini Dorkanath Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Going back to home, back to Godhead Ki Jai Iskan Los Angeles Yatara Ki Jai Brihad Madanga Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai, International Food for Life Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Kijai, Shri Hari Nam Sakirtan Kijai, Nitai Go Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo. All glories to the Assembly of Devotees. All glories to the Assembly of Devotees. All glories to the Assembly of Devotees. All glories to glories Shri Shri Guru and Goranga. Glory to the Prophet. Narayanam Namaskritya Naramchayvanarotamam 
देवी सारस्वती व्यासम तथो जय हरिहर Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan, unto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, who is the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashita Prayeshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya भगवतुत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैस्ति बै रेगुलरली अटेंडिंग द श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास एंड बै रेंडरिंग सर्विस ऑन टू द प्योर डिवोटी ऑल दैट इज ट्रबल सम टू द हार्ट इज ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड लविंग डिवोशनल सर्विस ऑन टू द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हुज वर्शिप ऑफ ट्रांसेंडल सॉन्ग्स बिकम्स एस्टैब्लिश्ड एज एन रेवर कप ऑफ फैट ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द थर्ड कैंटो ऑफ द श्रीमद् भागवतम दिस इज चैप्टर 14 एंटाइटल्ड प्रेग्नेंसी ऑफ दीति इन द इवनिंग एंड टुडेस टेक्स्ट इज 35 आई एम लुकिंग एट द बोर्ड आई एम द वन दैट इज प्रोजेक्टिंग इट देयर नमो रुद्राय महते देवयोग्राय मीधुषे शिवाय न्यस्त दंडाय धृत दंडाय मन्यवे नमो रुद्राय महते देवायोग्राय मीधुषे शिवाय न्यस्तंडाय धृतदंडाय मे नमो रुद्राय महते देवायोग्राय मीधुषे शिवाय न्यस्तंडाय धृतदंडाय मे नमो रुद्राय महते देवायोग्राय मीधुषे शिवाय न्यस्तंडाय धृतदंडाय मे नमो रुद्राय महते देवायोग्राय मीधुषे शिवाय न्यस्तंडाय तृतदंडाय मे वैष्णवी 
namo rudraya mahate devayo graya midhushe shivaya nyastadandaya trithadandaya vanyave namo rudraya mahate devayo graya midhushe Shivaya Nyastadandaya Dhritadandaya Manyave So, synonyms Namaha All obeisances unto Rudraya Unto the angry Lord Shiva Mahate Unto the great Devaya Unto the demigod, Ugraya, <clears throat> unto the ferocious, Midhushe, unto the fulfiller of all material desires, Shivaya, unto the all auspicious, Nyastadandaya, unto the forgiving, Dritadandaya, Unto the immediate chastiser. <clears throat> Manyave. Unto the angry. Srila Prabhupada's translation for this verse. Let me offer my obeisances unto the angry Lord Shiva, who is simultaneously the very ferocious great demigod and the fulfiller of all material desires. He is all auspicious and forgiving but his anger can immediately move him to chastise. Please repeat. Let me offer my obeisances unto the angry Lord Shiva, who is simultaneously the very ferocious great demigod and the fulfiller of all material desires. He is all auspicious and forgiving but his anger can immediately move him to chastise. Shiva Prophet's purport. Diti prayed for the mercy of Lord Shiva very cleverly. She prayed, quote, the Lord can cause me to cry, but if he likes, he can also stop my crying because he is Ashutosha. He is so great that if he likes, he can immediately destroy my pregnancy, but by his mercy, he can also fulfill my desire that my pregnancy not be spoiled. Because he is all auspicious, it is not difficult for him to excuse me from being punished, although he is now ready to punish me because I have moved his great anger. He appears like a man, but he is the Lord of all men. End of Diti's prayer, end of quote. Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nitinamane Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pratarine Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paschachadeshtarine Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtang Shapitang Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Vandeya Hang Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishavaksha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raganatan Bhutam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada and Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Bhutangsha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vishavanu Sute Devi Panabami Hari Priya Vancha ko patrubhya shra kripa sandhubhya eva cha patitanang pavane bhyo vaishnava bhyo namona maha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittananda Shedvaita Gadadha Arshivasani Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the chapter titled The Pregnancy of Diti in the Evening. So pregnancy goes on practically every moment not just amongst human beings, amongst practically all animal species, but no one understands what's actually happening. So we're going to discuss this a little later with evidence from this same canto, chapter, canto three. 
This morning, Subhas was reading from the seventh canto, how Hirani Kashipu was threatening his son, Prahlad, ready to kill him. So this is obviously connected to where we are here in the Bhagavatam in this 14th chapter of the third. He's just now being implanted in the womb of his mother Diti, the same Hiranya Kashipu, along with his twin brother Hiranyaksha. Interestingly enough, we practically have the entire backstory right here in this temple. We have Jai and Vijay. They were the gatekeepers in Vaikuntha who were cursed to come to this material world. And they appeared in this womb of Diti as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. And we have the end of the story over there, at least end of Hiranyakashipu. His brother was already killed. We have Lord Nishigade ripping apart. So right here in this temple room, we have the beginning and the end of this story. <clears throat> Now, as I said earlier, pregnancy is going on at practically every moment on this planet, and all over the universe. But people don't understand exactly what's happening. So the Lord himself, because all knowledge comes from him, later on in this canto, chapter 31, he appears and he's speaking to his mother, this is Kapilade, and he explains exactly what happens in this chapter. 31. So we're going to jump there, jumping ahead, but it's relevant to what we're reading here. So the verse everybody or many of you know, Karmana Devanaitrena Jantur Dehopati. Sriya Prabhisha Udaram Pungsha Reta Kanashraya. And this is a translation. The personality of God had said, under the supervision of the Supreme Lord and according to the result of his work, the living entity, the soul, is made to enter into the womb of a woman through the particle of male semen to assume a particular type of body. So this explains exactly what just happened. Diti didn't make herself pregnant. She understood how the process works. I have to lie down with my husband. So she enticed him, induced him to lie down with her to place that particle of semen in her body so she could become pregnant. So this is what's going on. It's not an independent process. The male and female forms exist for this reason in the material world. Yes, there are some extenuating circumstances. There are some anomalies. Some times it happens in some other ways by the will of the Lord. Because always, like it says here, under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. This is always going on under his, on, going on under his supervision. Not independent. So Prabhupada would say, anyway, let's read the purport, then we'll discuss a little bit. This purport is very, very eye-opening, because again, this pregnancy is going on. People want to have children, and they're having children, but they don't understand on a very basic level what is going on. So Prabhupada says, as stated in the last chapter, after suffering different kinds of hellish conditions, a man comes again to the human form of body. So it's not an accident. We come from the spiritual world, Unlike Jai and Vijay, we were not necessarily cursed. It's by your own free will. We're in the spiritual world by our free will. We turn away from Krishna service, service of the Lord, and we're placed in this material world. And now, once we come here, we work, we perform activities, and based on those activities, we get results. And one of those results, unfortunately, is that one can go down. Some people believe karma only works positively. You do things and you get positive results, and you pray to the universe, you get positive results, whatever. They don't understand how negative things happen, although it's all around us. We see not everybody is in the same situation. Even persons born in the same family don't wind up in the same situation. Example I've used many times, two children, one can be a very pious person, very intelligent, educated, become a judge, and brother or sister can just go the opposite direction and become a criminal and come before sibling to be judged. That's by their choice. It's not by some force. Your choice, at every moment you have a choice. Regardless of what situation you're in, you have a choice to do this or do that. Do this, do that. Don't do that. That choice always remains with us. So, in order to give a particular type of human form to a person who has already suffered hellish life, where am I? Actually, I can just scroll this. The soul is transferred to the semen of a man who is just suitable to become his father. Again, it's not an accident. Uh, I've heard personally, and maybe some of you have heard, sometimes children 
blow their parents away. The parent is complaining about the child. You're not doing this. You're not doing it. You're doing it wrong. Then, and the child says, why are you bothering me? I didn't ask to be born. And the parent goes, oh. They, they think that's right. That the child didn't ask to be born. We got together and sometimes we didn't even plan it and you were born. No, you asked to be born based on your previous activities, your karma. It's not an accident. You're placing exactly the semen of the father that you deserve and were put into the womb of the mother that you deserve. So your current situation is exactly what you deserve. Don't try to blame it on your parents. <clears throat> During sexual intercourse, the soul is transferred through the semen of the father into the mother's womb in order to produce a particular type of body. This process is applicable to all embodied living entities, but it is especially mentioned for the man who was transferred to the Andatamisha hell. After suffering there, when he who has had many types of hellish bodies like those of dogs and hogs is to come again to the human form, he's given the chance to take his birth in the same type of body from which he degraded himself to hell. In other words, a human body. In the human body, you get karma, karmic reactions. The animals don't. Generally speaking, from, there are three gateways to the human form from the animal life. The apes, the cats, and cows. In the mode of goodness, you take birth from the cow. So, once you work, work your way back up again to the human form, again, this karma kicks in. You have to be very careful what you do as a human being because you're going to get either positive or a negative result. Continuing, everything is done by the supervision of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Material nature supplies the body, but it does so under the direction of the super soul. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that a living entity is wandering in this material world on a chariot made by material nature. Who knows that verse, Bhagavad Gita? Ishvara Sarabhutanam, Riddeshe, Arjuna Tishti, Brahmayan Sarabhutani, Yantra. Rudani Mahe. So this yantra is the Sanskrit word for vehicle, like we say a car. So the body is like a car, a vehicle. So yantra Rudani Mahe, that vehicle is being pushed along by the modes of nature, by the material energy. But as the driver, as this passenger sitting in that vehicle, we can, again, make choices. It's not just all automatic. We can make choices. If the driver, who is the driver in the analogy of the car, the body is the car. Who is the driver? No. The driver. The driver is the intelligence. The mind is the reins. The soul is the passenger. And the horse is dragging the chariot or the senses. So the passenger, just like if you take an Uber and the guy is going too fast. You know you're in a 35 zone and he's doing 60. You can say, hey, slow down. Or stop. Let me out. <laughs> You don't have to go along with it. So similarly, we're riding this body of the material nature, this yantra. If things are going out of control, stop. Tell him, grab a, you have to grab a hold of the intelligence who is the driver. Say, hey, you're, you're going too fast. You're, you're making wrong turns. The soul is not just along for the ride. We have will to try to rectify whatever is going wrong. <clears throat> It is said, and we read that. So the Supreme Lord, as the super soul, is always present with the individual soul. He directs material nature to supply a particular type of body to the individual soul according to the result of his work. And the material nature supplies it. Here, one word, reta kanashayaha, is very significant because it indicates that it is not the semen of the man that creates life within the womb of a woman. Rather, you know, because women say, hey, you made me pregnant. Yes, but that pregnancy is viable only because the soul is there. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes the woman would like to be pregnant and she doesn't become pregnant. So it's being explained here by Lord Kapiladev. The living entity, the soul, takes shelter in a particular, in a particle of semen and is then pushed into the womb of a woman. Then the body develops. There is no possibility of creating a living entity without the presence of the soul simply by sexual intercourse. See, this is a mistake they made. They're thinking that by our combination, we're making our children. No, no, you're not. 
The soul is in the particle of semen injected into the womb of the mother who provides the ingredients for the body. But things can go wrong. Again, if the semen is not viable, in other words, the soul is not there, or for whatever reason, then the body doesn't develop. The materialistic theory that there is no soul and that a child is born simply by a material combination of the sperm and ovum is not very feasible. It is unacceptable. So because of this misconception, this ignorance, people think that they're creating life, they're creating their children, so they don't understand the connection to the Supreme Person, per Supreme Personality, who has provided, injected these living entities into the material energy according to their desire, and then they get placed into the womb of a particular mother through the agency of the father, and then they come out to have a particular set of opportunities in that particular lifetime. And that is true for all species. It's not that every lion cub gets the same opportunity as every other lion cub. No. Sometimes, generally speaking, the mother lioness, she goes away from the pride. They call a collection, collection of lions a pride. She goes away from the pride. She goes to some secluded place and makes a den, gives birth. But then she has to go feed herself. She can't just stay there and provide milk without feeding. So she has to leave the cubs and go feed. Quite often those cubs get killed by hyenas or snakes or some other, but some of them survive. So every individual cub doesn't go through the same thing in life. Similarly, every human being doesn't go through the same. As I said, even if you're born in the same family, you're given the same set of opportunities. You have the same parents, you go to the same schools, you have the same access to the same amount of money, but you turn out different. Does anybody here have siblings, brothers or sisters? Put your hand up. Would anybody here say that you're exactly the same as your brother or sister? Exactly. <laughs> it's an illusion. Even twins are not exactly the same. They have slightly different tastes. As Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, you're born with a particular type of tongue, ear, eye. So you're, you may seem superficially that you're the same as your, what, sister, brother? Your twin sister. But I guarantee you, she may like things a little spicier than you, or she likes a different kind of movie than you do, or like that. It's not exactly the same, because you're individual souls, eternally individual souls. You're never the same. Just like we can't merge into God, we can't merge into each other. We are eternally individual. So this lack of this knowledge is, is fueling so much ignorant activity in this world. Again, the parents think that kid, children's, the children belong to them. Even Diti is making that mistake. She's thinking now, this embryo in my womb is mine. And I don't want anything bad to happen to it. So in spite of the fact that I did something wrong, I'm praying to Lord Shiva, who she knows is a demigod. So we can learn from Diti. Some people are confused. Lord Shiva is the Supreme Lord. No, Diti, who's highly intelligent. Huh? She's living on the demigod level. She says... I am praying to Lord Shiva, who is the chief of the demigods. She doesn't say he's a supreme being. She says he's chief among men, he's the chief demigod from her perspective, not that he's Bhagavan, supreme personality of God. So, we should not, those of us who are coming up in the Christian consciousness movement, we should take these lessons to heart. This is the knowledge that we've been exposed to that we should take to heart. So that when we produce children, we don't make the mistake of thinking that they belong to us. <laughs> we should understand that Krishna has sent a particular soul to take shelter of my womb. And now that gives me a set of responsibilities to take care of that particular soul, not body, because the body is going to take birth and it's going to die. But that soul who was in that body, placed in that body, will continue after the death of the body. And we want to assure as far as possible that after the death of the body, that soul will go to the best destination. That's why we say, going back to home, back to God, at Ki Jai. We don't want to come back to Los Angeles or Chennai or Beijing. We want to go back to God, to Goloka. We want to go to Goloka and be with Krishna. So this is what we're going on to give the public this knowledge. You're not this body, you were placed into this body by your own work and by the supervision of the Supreme Lord. Now make the best of this opportunity as a human being. You can try to understand 
this transcendental knowledge. So I'm going to end with a few pictures from last night's uh, Harinam in Venice because it shows how the devotees are taking advantage of this movement to spread this knowledge. <clears throat> and we, we are all part of that. So here we are, we just arrived, we're walking along in Venice. Then this character was one of the first, there's so many characters on the Venice boardwalk. So this guy, as we were coming along, he was rapping. And then he started trying to repeat the Maha Mantra, but he couldn't get it right. So I went over and gave him the Mantra card, you could see the Mantra card in his hand. And then he started chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> and he started telling all the other people to chant Hare Krishna. Immediate immediate effect he's gonna go back to God soon he's already preaching Krishna consciousness and you can see on his lap he also got a reservoir of pleasure and here's our Swana Bindu he's distributing and he gave this man a mantra card and this guy was immediately very interested and he I don't know what he the conversation you had I wasn't close enough to hear but they had a long conversation and the guy started coming along with you'll see later on he he joined the party immediately and here's one of again preaching and this guy was very interested he took a Gita and you know I was kind of close enough to hear some of the conversation he was very interested he's going to be a devotee too <laughs> so here on the left you see that guy he just got a mantra card and now he's joined Lord Chaitanya's movement. <laughs> Literally. He followed us all the way back to the parking lot. Now this uh, devotee was visiting from Soho Street. She's originally from Osaka. But I, I can't remember her name. She told me her name yesterday. Who knows her name? Something Vrindavan. She's a disciple of Kadamba Khan and Imahara. Very enthusiastic distributor. She was fearless. Approached everybody. Gave them like that. <clears throat> You'll see. Here she's approaching a couple of guys, and um, this is the effect of our book distribution. Here's this guy, you can see, look at his nails. You can see this guy's living on the street, is not, but he got a reservoir of pleasure. And he wasn't just like flipping through, he immediately started reading. I was watching him, he was reading, trying to understand. You can see, he's looking at the pictures, trying to understand what this is all about. This is Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Papi tapi yatachila. Harinama Udarila, the poppies and the tapis, the lowborn, the sinful, these are the ones that Lord Chaitanya, of course we may not necessarily want to bring them back to the temple right away. Yeah, you may want to do some vetting before you bring them here. Please do that. There's one per person that comes here, I don't want to name any names, but this person makes a habit of going on the street and inviting these people who are obviously crazy to come back to the temple. One of them came last week. This person invited this crazy person to come here. He walked in the temple with his shoes on. And when I told to confront him, he made a big scene. And so we had to throw him out. So we don't necessarily want to bring them back to the temple immediately. But at the same time, we want to give everybody the opportunity. To prasadam, hear the holy name, get a pamphlet. This, again, this guy was obviously living on the street. But he was so interested, he sat down and started reading right away. And then here's this woman. I happened to pick up. The conversation, she was just coming along. There's a Bodhi, uh, gave her the reservoir place. Oh, and she said, oh my God, I was looking for this. Just like that. So she's probably going to show up here also. So it's so important for us to go out in the street. Some of us can do it every day, like Brigopati, Sachitanoi. They go out every day because they have caught up this importance of distributing this transcendental knowledge. But even if we can only go occasionally, at least every Friday, we should go out on the Hari now. I spoke to Subhas about this, so just to make sure I'm not making it up. Subhas wants all the ashram devotees to go out on Hari now, at least this one big Maha Hari now every Friday. Please don't make any excuses. If you don't have any temple service, authorized service that you're doing, 5.30, be in front of the temple. We're going to go either to Venice or to Santa Monica or somewhere we're going to go and chant. And everybody benefits, trust me. Even if you know, the shopkeepers, many of them, they come out and they start dancing. <laughs> They're blasting their own, you know, hip hop or whatever. But as soon as they hear the Hare Krishna mantra, they come out and start dancing to the Hare Krishna mantra. This is not our doing. It's not that we're so potent. 
No, this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Lord Chaitanya wants to save everybody through this Harinam Sankirtan. He himself, in the beginning, he was chanting privately, Shiva Sangam, but eventually he brought it out to the streets. That's where the Hare Krishna Mantra belongs, not just sitting here in front of the deities. That's obviously wonderful. And we would love the whole of LA to come here and do that. But in the beginning, how are they going to know? We have to go on and take it to them. Take it to them. Go out in the streets, walk up and down, chant Hare Krishna. And the results will be there. It's, again, it's not that we're guaranteeing anything. But at the very least, they're getting the opportunity to hear the holy name. If we have some prasadam, they get to taste that. And if we have our pamphlets, they get that, they read it. And immediately they start getting transcendental knowledge. This Reservoir of Pleasure is the first pamphlet that I got. This is what attracted me to the Hare Krishna movement. Krishna, that name is transcendental. Krishna means the highest pleasure. Every one of us is looking for pleasure, but we don't know where to look. So this is what Prophet is giving everybody the opportunity. You take this Reservoir of Pleasure, read it, you will immediately be on your way back to Godhead. Grantarashimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Siddhanta Prabhu, who shows the videos in the ash, under the ashram for breakfast, during breakfast, he wants everybody to know that he's showing a three-part series about Rupanuga. Rupanuga, one of the early disciples of Srila Prabhupada. So it's very important. If you'd like to see that, please go to breakfast and sit down and watch that video. Hare Krishna.